Welcome back to GADMAC 2023 Session B as we start our conference uh, in the New York time zone. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and delegates, it's my privilege to open the New York time zone stream of GADMAC 2023 or the Global Animal Disaster Management Conference. My name is Steve Glassie and I'm the patron of Animal EVAC New Zealand and also the chair of the GADMAC Conference Committee. It's my honor to address this gathering of experts, professionals, and advocates who have dedicated their lives and their careers and their time to protecting and safeguarding animals in times of disaster. As we gather here, let us reflect on the journey that we have undertaken since the inaugural GADMAC in 2021. The world has witnessed numerous challenges that have tested our resolve and exposed the vulnerabilities within our global disaster management system. From devastating wildfires, hurricanes through to COVID-19, we have witnessed the profound impact of these crises on our animals and human ecosystems. These challenges have served as a wake-up call, urging us to reevaluate our approach to animal disaster management. It is crucial that we recognize the interconnectedness of our actions and their consequences for the welfare of animals, and no longer can we turn a blind eye to the suffering and disregard the urgent need for change. Today, I implore each and every one of you to champion this change and to become agents of progress in your respective fields. One key area that demands our attention is the improvement of laws and regulations governing animal disaster management. And that will be a theme throughout most of the speakers presenting at GADMAC 2023. We must strive for a comprehensive, robust and animal inclusive disaster management framework and legislations. By advocating for improved laws, we can address the gaps in the current systems, ensuring that we take an animal inclusive approach to building community resilience. This means pushing for legislation that mandates for the inclusion of animals in disaster management plans, allocating resources for their rescue and care, and holding guardians and government to account under a shared responsibility approach. We have come a long way, even in just a few decades. I recall re researching uh, emergency management plans in New Zealand a few years back to find the Hutt City Council or municipality level emergency plan saying that animals would compete with humans for food in a disaster. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty confident that my dog can keep its bag of dog biscuits because I won't be eating them. I recall conversations with fellow emergency managers who weren't given the tools, the support or the resources to incorporate animals into the emergency plans with the default position was, well, just shoot them. Current and proposed emergency management laws in New Zealand continue to give unbridled power to officials to unilaterally do so, to destroy animals and with full statutory protection. This needs to be challenged. However, we have made strides globally and we're here today because of pioneers such as Dr. Sebastian Heath, Dr. Dick Green, and Professor Leslie Irvine, Irvine, who have all contributed greatly in building the body of knowledge around the emerging discipline of animal disaster management. And we thank them for their contributions and efforts over the years. As a society, we know we need to acknowledge the link, the intrinsic link between humans and animals, better known as the human-animal bond, and how this influences behavior in disasters. Renowned scholar Eric Oftenhide once said that emergency plans should be based on likely behaviors, not correct behaviors. And the old mantra was that human lives were first and animals second. But we know it's not that simple these days. And for many people, their animals are critical to their emotional survival and their likelihoods. 
I recall having dinner in Bangkok with a few good friends some time ago. They had never met. One was a veterinarian specializing in disaster response. The other was a humanitarian aid worker specializing in child protection. As the conversation developed, the veterinarian spoke about his work saving animals in disaster. And intuitively, he picked up that my humanitarian aid colleague had a look on his face that begged the question, why on earth are you worrying about the animals when there's all these children affected by disaster? With great humility, he went on to say that when the rural communities lost their cattle in, the, in recent floods, they lost their only source of income. And consequently, their daughters were sent into the city to be underage sex workers and exploited. Restocking efforts by an animal NGO had a direct benefit to stopping child exploitation. Saving animals saves human lives, whether it be in the US or in Thailand. We all need to embrace the concepts of value-based emergency management as espoused by scholars such as Damon Coppola and others. We need to focus on emergency management efforts, not on what we think, but what the community values. And animals rank highly valuable on the spectrum. In New Zealand, the emergency management legislation is now up for review and public submissions are being sought by the, um, on the emergency management bill by the parliamentary, by parliament's government and administration select committee. For countries like New Zealand, now is a prime opportunity to develop world leading animal inclusive disaster management law like that was passed in the USA. Most of us know that following Hurricane Katrina in 2005, just a year later, the Pets Emergency Transportation and Standards Act was passed. The Fritz Institute found that 44% of those that chose to stay behind in Hurricane Katrina, Katrina did so in part because they weren't allowed to take their animals. Again, we come back to the philosophy that saving animals saves people. In the Animal Evac New Zealand handover report, or the report handed over to Parliament in 2019, we were privileged to have former Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA administra Administrator Craig Fugate as our guest speaker. There would be very few people in the world that have the depth of emergency management experience that Craig has. When you have one of the world's leading authorities on disaster management championing your message and your reports, you know you're on the right path. And I'd like to share a short extract of his presentation. First thing is, when anybody you know, starts talking about animal issues, you're going to have the naysayers say, but people are first. People should be you know, the primary goal here, you know, not pets. And I would go, pets are a people problem. Uh, from my earliest days working at the local level of government, where we had to evacuate for a chemical emergency, we had this toxic cloud of gas going across the highway. We had law enforcement, police officers out stopping traffic, and cars were whizzing past them, going into the cloud. We're like, who are these crazy people? They were going home to rescue their pets. I mean, they consciously drove through a toxic cloud to get to their pets. But at that time, our messaging and disasters was, if you had to evacuate, evacuate, but leave your pets behind with plenty of food and water. And I'm like, isn't that kind of a mixed <clears throat> message? Because either I'm saying it's your pet's last meal, or it's not that bad and you don't really need to go. But we had kind of broken this down into people first, pets maybe, but they're not important. You can view Craig Fugate's address in our comprehensive report on animal disaster law reform on our website, animalevac.nz. And I'd like to take the time to acknowledge the support of Gareth Hughes, former member of parliament, for his support in taking this report to the New Zealand government. So this year's GADMAC has been a, provides a wide range of speakers and topics. 
We have world-class speakers donating their time to present such as Jackson Z, Gerardo Hutez, Jennifer Gardner, Rebecca Hustard, Dick Green, Elon Kalman, James Sawyer, Mel Taylor, just to name a few. We also welcome emerging champions for change, such as Ultima Sayed, who is supporting our vision for the development of model animal disaster law and mechanisms for accountability. True to the label on the tin, GADMAC is global. We have nearly every continent covered with presenters from countries including India, Ukraine, USA, UK, Portugal, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Nicaragua, Austria, Turkey, Italy, Colombia, Costa Rica, Bulgaria, and the Netherlands. New to GADMAC is our is, a, is that we've uh, made available live closed captions in over 16 languages. As our recordings are made available later on YouTube, they will also be available in a wider range of closed caption languages. GADMAC is free to attend, present, and view. And this has only been made possible with the generosity of our sponsors. This year, I'd like to welcome Four Paws International as our platinum sponsor, and a special thanks to Dr. Jackson Z for his support and wise counsel. With our focus on mitigating disaster harm to animals through legislation, it's fitting that he presents a keynote address on championing animal disaster law at an international level at session D. We are also humbled to have the support of other iconic organizations and as sponsors, such as the American Veterinary Medical Foundation, Humane Society International, and the International Fund for Animal Welfare. GADMAC has become an iconic event because of its truly global reach and impact. And most importantly, because of the genuine vision to create animal inclusive, disaster resilient communities. We have doubled the number of delegates from 1100 to over 2200 since our first conference. And I'd like to take the time to thank my colleagues on the GADMAC organizing committee, Gerardo Hutez, Mel Taylor, Rebecca Hustard, Jenny Rosegay, and our coordinator, Christina Giva, for their efforts to launch GADMAC 2023. We would also like to thank the Australian Journal of Emergency Management and its editor, Christine Boucher, who have kindly partnered with us again to publish articles arriving from the conference. Again, such um, articles are available freely as AGM is an open access journal. And you can view last year's special edition of AGM through our website. For those that have not heard of Animal Evac, we're a small charity managing, uh, we're a small animal disaster management charity advocate, ad, um, advocating for change. We've had no, we have no staff, we have no vehicles, um, but we have managed to champion numerous changes, including the successful resolution of the country's first animal disaster by law or local ordinance. We've developed the first national pet friendly evacuation operational guide, a local plan and exercise in New Zealand to test pet friendly sheltering concepts. As well as responding to disasters locally, nationally, and internationally, such as the 2019 to 2020 New South Wales bushfires in Australia. We've been recognized for our efforts, such as through the International Association of Emergency Managers, where we won the 2021 Partners and Preparedness Award uh, for the Oceania region for their conference, and also awarded Supreme winner of the Wellington Regional Community Awards uh, for our wider um, activities. A big thank you to our uh, volunteers nationwide, over 400 strong. I'd like, you to, uh, I'd like to invite you to support the work of Animal Evac through making a donation through our website or the QR code displayed. Your generosity will help us mitigate disaster related harm to animals through improved laws and education through events such as GADMAC. As we embark on this conference, I urge you all to seize the opportunity to connect, to learn, to inspire one another. Let us engage in thought-provoking discussions, exchange innovative ideas, and forge alliances that will, will shape the trajectory 
of animal disaster management for years to come. Join us on Facebook and LinkedIn and use the hashtag GADMCONF to spread the good work that's been done here at the conference. Together, we can overcome the challenges we face and build a future where animals are not merely victims of circumstance, but recipients of unwavering compassion and protection. Let us all champion change and let us be catalysts for progress and let us leave a legacy that future generations will be proud to inherit. Thank you, everyone. May this conference be a resounding success in our collective pursuit of a better world for animals in times of disaster.